Hey everyone, welcome back to the RK Motors channel. It's time for another deep dive in one of our cool cars. It's time for another showcase spotlight. Roll the intro. Hey everyone, I'm Josh, Content Director at RK Motors Charlotte and Bearded Mountain Man. Today's Showcase Spotlight, 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Pro Tour. But first, today's trivia question. What was the best year of sales for the Chevrolet Camaro? And if you don't know that, you can find it in one of our past videos. Just look for Camaros on our channel. So if you follow our channel, you probably know we've uh, dove into the history of the 69 Camaro pretty in depth. Uh, the Nelson Racing Engines car, the link is in the bio if you wanna know specific Camaro history. Uh, so today we're gonna take a look at where Chevrolet was in 1969. And the reason we're doing that is because pretty much every car the division made in 1969 has become very collectible. They're some of the, actually some of the biggest collectible cars in the American muscle car market. So in my opinion, there are really only three brands that have ever successfully been all things to all people in the automotive market. Uh, those being Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota. So in 1969, Chevrolet was firing on all cylinders. Uh, they had an awesome lineup of cars, all the way from the bottom at the compact Nova, uh, you know, up through midsize to the Chevelle Malibu and you know, sporty offerings, Corvette, Camaro, uh, the full sizes, Biscayne, Bel Air, Caprice, and Impala. I mean, these are all names that we all know as collectors and. A lot of us fondly remember or, you know, kind of adore, even if we weren't alive back in those days. And that's not even counting things like the final year of Corvair production or the El Camino or trucks or vans or station wagons. Uh, so when you look at that and then you look at the packages they were offering as far as performance, uh, SS was available on Nova, uh, El Camino, Chevelle, Camaro. Uh, the Z cars, of course, the 69 Z28 and ZL1. You know, the 69 ZL1 was the most powerful Camaro until the fifth generation of the car. That should say something right there. Uh, and the 1969 Camaro, in fact, on Chevrolet Centennial, which was 2011, was voted the best Chevrolet of all time by Chevrolet fans. Uh, additionally, they offered a variety of body styles, uh, convertible in Corvette and Camaro, and T-tops in Corvette, which was a relatively new thing, and big blocks in a lot of their cars. One of my favorite taglines from 1969 Chevrolet marketing literature was the Chevelle appeals to two age groups, those under 30 and over. And that was just kind of how the brand was operated back then. And because of that, they sold 360,000 plus Chevelles in 1969 alone. So this Camaro uh, is a ground up professional build that was conducted right here in Charlotte. Uh, it's decked in BMW Singapore gray metallic, looks very sinister and very clean. I'm not really sure of the specific years of that paint. I know it's on the back half of the last decade is when they started offering it. 
lots of cool little touches that aren't necessarily custom, but you know, with these cars, there are a lot of parts and we're a lot of trim, so you can mix and match. Uh, Rally Sport front end, of course. And you can't, I don't know if you can tell, but this is all satin black and flat black, every bit of the grill. A smooth bumper, which basically means that they've removed the bumper bolts. Down here, you have modern uh, parking lamps and a D80 spoiler that actually has braces on it. A lot of people, when they'll restore these cars, a neat little fact is they won't put the back braces on the spoiler. Uh, going higher, shaved header panel. It's very common on restorations. People just get rid of the script. Cow induction hood, of course. Got to have that on a 69 Camaro. Back here, flat black and satin black trim around the windows, tinted glass. Very clean profile, no emblems, shaved emblems. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with that term, but you know, it's an old hot rotting term. Anytime somebody says something has been shaved, it just means removed. So shaved emblems, no fender emblems. Um, aftermarket mirrors, satin black door handles. One neat detail uh, is field deck seams. So from the factory, these cars would have come with the seam right here. Somebody's taking the time to fill those. Looks a lot cleaner. And a lot of times these cars will rust out somewhat around here. So if you can fill the seams, might help a little bit in the future with rusting. Out back, the 80 deck spoiler, of course. Um, no emblems on the back. Billet LED tail lights. Another smooth bumper. Uh, overall, really clean car. Uh, and it looks great running down the road. Let's take a look at what powers this beast. So when you build a Pro Tour or Resto Mod, it's very tempting to go with modern power. Uh, it's never a bad choice to go with LS power when you're doing modern power. This is a Blueprint Engines LS427 Stroker. It's one of the best sounding cars in this showroom. It sounds amazing, probably really fast too. Blueprint Engines is one of the largest crate engine manufacturers in the world. Uh, they started about four years ago building race engines one by one and they focus a lot now on just fun horsepower for the street uh, this engine is probably about fifteen thousand dollars if you were to you know as, as a starting price uh, it's 11 to 1 compression 625 horsepower diner proven horsepower and 565 pound feet of diner proven torque of course that kind of money gets you a lot of great extras or a lot of great components uh, LS3 intake, uh, drive-by-wire LT5 throttle body, 42-pound fuel injectors, uh, six-bolt aluminum block, uh, Blueprint Engines aluminum heads, forged internals, so forged crank, forged rods, forged pistons, hydraulic roller cam, uh, and of course, it's been dressed with some of the best stuff you can buy as well. Ceramic coated headers, Griffin aluminum radiator, uh, True Track front drive, nice carbon fiber engine cover, uh, it looks very good, runs very good too. Let's take a look at one of the best aspects of the car, custom interior. I say best aspects because I'm generally a traditionalist. I like traditional interiors. Not that my opinion matters, it doesn't. But the interior of this car is truly cool. Uh, custom everything, pretty much. Diamond stitch seats. Uh, it's very cool to see diamond stitching. That's something I feel like um, is kind of making a comeback, but it hasn't quite made a huge resurgence yet. Leather wrap dash with a Impala style cluster, really neat touch. Push button ignition with classic instruments telemetry. Uh, vintage air conditioning, of course. Power windows. Really neat how they made a full custom console uh, as opposed to factory cars with not really a bench rear seat, but more defined buckets in this car because of the custom console. I uh, got a flat bottom build specialty steering wheel that's on a tilt column. It's a little bit better for spirited driving. And the professionally installed audio system that includes a Kenwood touchscreen head unit, Hertz speakers, and JL audio subwoofers. It's a very cool place to spend some miles. Just how pro touring is this Camaro? Let's put it on a lift and see. The answer is very, but I'm sure you could have guessed that by now. Uh, behind the engine, nice Tremec 5-speed overdrive. 
lots of uh, good highway driving there. The uh, entire suspension of the car is total cost involved. So you have a torque arm rear unit here. Uh, very good for isolating the axle, not letting them move too much. Good launches and, you know, pretty good in cornering. Adjustable coilover shocks, of course, part of the package. Nice big fuel tank here. It's not factory. Got a total cost involved pro touring front clip. Of course, power rack and pinion steering. Big sway bar. Overall, a very nice setup. A lot of great sound thanks to the long tube headers, large diameter exhaust with an X pipe crossover, and Magnaflow mufflers. Overall, a very well restored and well built car. Uh, very, very streetable. Not something I would be afraid to take out and put a lot of miles on. On the outside, some nice braking hardware, uh, wheel wood, six pistons up front, four pistons in the back with drilled and slotted rotors, custom HRE wheels. And one thing I just noticed, filled marker lamps on this car. It's another nice custom touch, makes it, gives it that little sinister edge. That pretty much wraps up things with this awesome 1969 Pro Touring Camaro. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Leave us a comment, some feedback below, maybe tell us an answer to the trivia question. Uh, if you like what I'm wearing, the shirt and this hat, we just launched some merch at our website, www.rkmotors.com, something we hope to expand in the future. Uh, this is all prototype stuff, so you might not look this cool, but you can get some nice stuff there, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.